Greetings everybody, welcome to another edition of Creation Talk, and today's subject will be How did Noah fit all the animals onto the ark? Uh, my name is Dr. Matthew Chahadi, and so with me is uh, Keaton Halley. Hello. Hey there, Matthew. And so today's uh, subject is about how uh, all the animals could fit in, on Noah's Ark. This is a very interesting question because it, it uh, raises a lot of doubt into people's mind as to whether Noah's Ark was real, whether it was really feasible. Yeah, it's obviously something that we've, uh, if, if you grew up in church like, like I did, uh, you may have learned a lot about this in Sunday school, singing songs about um, how the rains came down and the floods came up and uh, Noah going onto the Arky Arky. <laughs> But at the same time, it's, it's a challenging subject for adults because this is one of the most attacked areas of scripture. Right. And of course, uh, secular uh, people in the secular media, they see a lot of things against uh, Noah's Ark. For example, that the Ark was very small, it was very instable, and that, of course, what uh, some biologists also say is that, while we know that there are 10 million species all across the world, how could they fit onto Noah's Ark? I mean, it's impossible. Yeah. So let's talk about this, how, how it really is possible for all the animals to fit, fit onto the Ark. And a, a lot of times we talk about misconceptions that people have. Yeah. I mean, if somebody says to, to the believer, how did Noah fit all the animals on the Ark? We can say, ask them in return, well, how large was Noah's Ark and how many animals did he need to take, right? It, exactly, exactly. And so, I mean, uh, I, I believe that the Bible has the answer to our questions. So let's look at what the Bible says. Uh, in Genesis uh, chapter 6, verse 15, Noah's ark was actually very large. It was 300 by 30 by 50 cubits, and, and one cubit being 18 inches. Cubit's basically the length of somebody's forearm right. um, from elbow. elbow to fingertip. Yeah. yeah, exactly. In ancient times, they had different standardized measurements, so we don't know for sure how long the cubit was that Noah used, but it's it's on the order of a foot and a half or, or 18 inches, half. like you said. And so, of course, if we uh, calculate the volume, it comes up to 1.5 million cubic feet, and that really is mm -hmm. humongous. Yeah, Noah's Ark, the, the real Ark, would have been longer than a than a football field, right? About maybe 450 feet long is 300 cubits times a foot and a half. Right, and, and then according to other measurements, they say that it's about the size of an ocean liner. If somebody's familiar with the, the Queen Elizabeth II, that's about the, about the size, or at least on the order of the size of what the orc was like. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it's very different from the picture that people might have if they're just thinking of the, the visuals that they've seen before on nursery walls and things where Noah's Ark looks like an overcrowded bathtub with giraffe snacks out the top. And it's right? very unstable. But you know, <laughs> actually, Korean scientists, creation creationists, they did a study, and they they floated these different uh, like uh, types of like uh, different ship uh, models. They found that Noah's Ark was, which is like in the shape of a brick, uh, it was the single most stable uh, shape of of a boat for riding on the turbulent waters. Of, of the flood, so right. it was very stable. And the, the dimensions are specifically given in Genesis chapter six. We know it was a six to one ratio, which is yeah, yeah. you know still the way many modern ocean liners are built built to those dimensions. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this was one myth that we just blasted out of the water. Uh, <laughs> let's take a look at another myth that people uh, come up with. Uh, uh, did Noah really take on board every single species of animal? Did he? Did he really do that? Yeah. Well, the the Bible doesn't use that term species, at least not in the modern technical scientific sense. Right, right, right. Um, it, it rather uses the word kind. Uh, Matthew, of course, you're an yeah. expert on, on the biblical kinds. That's your, your special field of research. Yeah, because it? that means that, you know, the Bible doesn't use our modern uh, uh, concept of taxonomy. Rather, we should let the Bible speak for itself. So a kind, it's a broader category of, of animals. Uh, it corresponds maybe to the level of genus or of family. Mm -hmm. And even uh, even evolutionists have found that if you go above the level of, of family, you can't really uh, cluster or group animals together. So at the level of genus or family, uh, animals and different plants, uh, they, they cluster very nicely together into these, yeah. into these, uh, into and, these and units. And what you're saying, you know, if people don't aren't familiar with these scientific taxonomic categories, uh, oh, a yes, species yes. is kind of a narrow yeah. category. Uh, a genus would be broader than that. And the family and would be even broader than that. And a family is bigger. Yeah. And we're saying the kind probably corresponds more to the family or genus level rather than yeah. the species. 
So that means you can have right, many right. different species within each biblical kind, because God built into the kinds right, right. a lot of potential for, for variation. Yeah, for example, you could take, uh, let's say, the dog kind or the cat kind or the horse kind. These are all different kinds. You can recognize a kind very intuitively. And for example, like in the past few hundred years, they've, they've bred like several hundred dog dog breeds, starting from like the wolf. And so, uh, if we if we you know go with a, a single kind covering several hundred species, then that means you know this ten million species of animals on the ark it gets gets reduced to a very uh, small number. In fact, yeah, uh, he, he just brought the kinds right. So yeah. instead of bringing two Great Danes, two Dachshunds, two Dalmatians, et cetera. He just brought two canines, basically, would right. include not only, you know, from that original pair on the Ark, developed our modern varieties, uh, domestic dogs, as well as wolves and coyotes and right, right, dingoes right. and so forth. And, and also, according to creation scientists, uh, John Woodenwrap, he wrote a book called uh, Noah's Ark of Feasibility Study, and he estimated that Noah had to take on wood only 8,000 kinds a male and a female of each kind. So that really, really reduces the number of animals. Yeah, M making some assumptions, but that's a, probably a, a reasonable approximation if it's yeah. between um, the family and, and the genus level where the, where the biblical kind falls. Right. So it's not millions of species, just two of each kind, greatly reduces the number of animals that Noah had to take. Yeah, and of course, uh, according to Genesis uh, chapter 6, verses 19 to 20, uh, Noah didn't have to take on board fish or insects. He took on board the the off, that is, the the birds and the behemoth, which are uh, land animals, vertebrates. And so, I mean, yeah, fish... Yeah, good point. The, the creatures in the ocean could survive a global flood just fine, right, right, so right. Noah just took the land vertebrates, essentially. Yeah, exactly. I mean, fish, uh, many species of fish, I mean, of course, with the flood, uh, fresh water and salt water would have mixed, but many uh, fish species, like a stickleback, they're capable of surviving in both salt and also fresh water. So that's yeah. not really a problem for them. Uh, otherwise, I mean... Uh, when the flood happened, it would have crushed a lot of, a lot of trees, and there would have been a lot of log mats. And just an interesting point that uh, when I studied taxonomy at university, they said that the way different reptiles got from mainland South America to the Galapagos Island was that they floated on these log mats, on these tree mats, all the way across the ocean yeah. to the Galapagos. So even secular biologists don't have a problem with this. <laughs> mm, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, some people also say that uh, that um, we had these big dinosaur species, and you know, can you imagine like a big brontosaurus with its big mm. tail and its big neck in the ark? How did how did these animals fit on the ark? Yeah, well, we certainly do believe that the dinosaurs would have had their representative kinds on board. Uh, but if people think, well, the dinosaurs are just too big, mm. once again, we can go back to well, the, the ark was absolutely enormous on the one hand, yeah. but then we can con consider the the size of the dinosaurs. On the other hand, and actually, um, there's there's a variety of things that we could point to there. Um, first, um, even once dinosaurs were full grown, not all got to be as big as the great sauropods like Brachiosaurus yeah, 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 and so forth. Yeah. Some were the size of chickens. You know, the, the Compsognathus, Compsognathus is, yeah. is a very small dinosaur, yeah. um, and so you average it out, it might be something more like the size of a pony. Uh, the dinosaurs yeah. as as a whole, as a group. Um, yeah, so, so, you're that saying, big. so you're saying that basically these these big sized uh, um, dinosaurs they really the exception as a, as opposed yeah. to the rule of how exactly. Large they were. Okay. Uh, we can also consider: Did Noah have to bring these full sized adult dinosaurs, or might he have taken younger specimens? Uh, we know, for example, scientists who have studied growth patterns in in the bones of dinosaurs, they've been able to determine that at least many of them underwent a growth spurt in their adolescent years. And so it would make sense sort of for Noah to, yeah. to take younger dinosaurs. Like hatchlings, hatchlings. Yeah, or, yeah, or maybe yeah. just before that growth spurt so that they can reproduce after the flood. Yeah, you know, you, you yeah. certainly don't want to bring older dinosaurs that are past their their the age where yeah. they can reproduce. That, that, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, so in summary, we can see that Noah's Ark was very large. And of course, uh, um, there would have been space left over even for for food or for drinking water. Yeah, and the Bible tells us yeah. he took plants on board as well. Yeah, and also, so that means that the ark was huge, and that also, uh, uh, um, as against popular misconception, uh, he didn't have to take on board like lots and lots of animals. Some could uh, uh, survive outside the ark. So that means that uh, there is a, a lot of evidence to show that uh, putting all these animals, uh, you know, uh, is very feasible. Yeah. Yeah, so the Bible really stands up to the the scrutiny of the skeptics, the challenges that they 
throughout the Bible, actually it's consistent with what we know from science today, when you understand the account correctly. Right, so that means that basically uh, we shouldn't listen to just one side of the story of like atheists bringing, bringing up all these all these uh, contra uh, alleged contradictions if we uh, make an examination ourselves and we, can, we see that, uh, that, uh, that science really, really supports what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that means that you can trust your Bible. Uh, Amen. Yeah. There's another question that skeptics also raise about Noah's Ark is that there are really millions and millions of spe uh, species of insects. Now, did Noah take on board each and every single insect species, or how is this? Yeah, well, again, of course, there's the distinction between kinds and species. So yeah. Noah would have, um, for all the animals that he did take, he only had to take the kinds. But with insects in particular, um, what the Bible says is that Noah took the animals in whose nostrils was the breath of life. And so um, insects don't have nostrils or, or breathe in the same way that we do. They breathe right, through yeah. little um, holes in their skin called spiracles. You know, basically, they, they probably don't qualify uh, to the Bible's description. As, high, as higher cognitive life forms. Yeah, they're, they're not yeah. land vertebrates. They're not yeah. the animals that the Bible is, is thinking of. And so, well, if they weren't on board the ark, though, then how could they survive a worldwide flood? There are lots of ways. They could have floated on massive vegetation and things without necessarily having to be obligate passengers on board. Right, right, right. Uh, Keaton, thank you very much for your discussion. My pleasure. Right, and uh, this was just one topic uh, related to Noah's Ark. We can talk about so many, so many different things. For example, uh, what about the Ice Age? Where did the floodwaters go? Uh, and so if you want uh, answers to similar questions, please visit our website, creation.com, and you can do a search and you, you can look through a lot of articles that we wrote about, uh, about uh, Noah's Ark and similar things. And so if you, uh, if you like this production, please hit the like button. Uh, and then you can also subscribe to uh, start receiving uh, similar, uh, uh, similar content. And also, if you'd like, then you can join uh, the comments below. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm.